Good morning, Peace of Christ family. Thank you, Fran, for that beautiful hymn. We've, we're getting some really sweet comments for you to look at later about it. Um, welcome to our first fall gathering of 2020. We're so excited. We have um, a lot of programming coming out uh, in the fall. We've got today is our first uh, new series for the fall called Embodiment. We're gonna spend three weeks talking about it. Um, and I just have a few announcements before we get going. We added the Zoom link in the guide just in case uh, for some reason the connection gets lost on Facebook. We had that happen earlier this week. And um, so the, the link is there. And in the event that we stop streaming, just go click on that link and you can watch from within Zoom. Um, also, please gather your communion elements because we will be taking communion in just a bit. I've got mine here. Guys, you want to hold yours up? Also, welcome to our leaders today, my weekly almond. <laughs> Got some good stuff. Yeah, we're so happy to see our friendly faces on here with us, and we hope you enjoy seeing them too and get to hear from them in just a minute. We have some things you can already sign up for in the fall. One of those things is called speed friending. It's kind of like speed dating, except you don't have to pick just one person at the end, and it's on Zoom. <laughs> But we're going to try this out. And I have linked to the registration form in our guide. So you can sign up for that. It's on a Friday night. Um, yeah. This is our sort of creative response to like how difficult it is to meet other people in the church. And we have new folks who we want to make friends with each other. So please come to Speed Friending. Yeah. For the most part, we like to empower people to you know, make their relationships, cultivate their own friendships in the church, but we're trying to create spaces for that to make it easier in these strange times. So sign up for that. We're also doing a fall Bible study, bringing it back to the Wednesday night Bible study kind of situation starting in October. We're using a book called The God Who Sees to help guide us through that. You can order the book on Amazon and you need to. Um, it's a really easy book and we'll be going through a couple of chapters a week empower people to, you know, make their relationships, cultivate oh. their own friendships. 
tips. And oh, that's charts. mine. I was like, where's that voice coming from? <laughs> Where We're is it coming from? <laughs> bringing it back to the Wednesday night Bible study kind of situation starting oh, in. Are you muted, bud? <laughs> I'm here. Overseas to help guide us oh, through that. Paul. Maybe Paul. I'll mute him. Okay. You guys, I was just having like <laughs> the weirdest. Ooh, I'm so sorry. That's what y'all have to hear. <laughs> it's like, that voice is annoying. <laughs> Thank you for someone figuring that out because I was having like this out of body experience. Like, <laughs> anyway. Fall Bible study, go read more in the link, uh, in the guide. I've linked to it and you can register to be a part of that small group. Uh, let's I see how you just got back on your train of thought. <laughs> so, and then also something coming up, we have a lot, a lot, a lot coming up, but something coming up just to put on your radar is Fran is leading a limited um race and equity cohort that's going to start in november you can okay yeah let me say something about it i'm not leading it okay because i'm not a race and equity expert we are outsourcing it to freedom road and lisa sharon harper is leading this for it's like a four-week um course that you go through and then all I'm leading is the discussion that we have after we go through each week's material. Okay. So I'm not a race and equity expert, but Lisa Sharon Harper is, and she's great at it and she's famous about it. So. Yeah. Can someone else link in the link to the guide? Because I did link it in the title and in the comments, but um, just some people aren't seeing it. So maybe the trick is someone else to do it. All right, cool. Okay, well, um, that is all we'll say for now, but just let us know if you wanna be on our email list if you're not, and we kind of give a highlight of everything coming up every week. Thank you, Forrest. Uh, and so now I'm gonna go ahead and transition us into this sacred moment together. And we are so excited to have Amina Khan here today on her keyboard to chime us in. We chime the hour 10 times for the 10th hour to help center us, take some breaths and enter into a collective moment of worship and um, just sacred, like, I don't know, I messed up, okay. Thank you, Amina. You are way better at that than I am, so uh, way to go. <laughs> um, good morning, Peace of Christ kiddos. I have just been feeling like I miss you, is, is most of it, okay? I just miss being at church and that feeling that we all get, that sense of community and being around friends. So I, well, my kids and I, Connor and Emeline and I have created we think most of the peace of Christ, like children here. Okay. So here's me. I don't, I have some sort of a helmet on and Connor and Emmeline and the Dawes are over here. And back here, we've got Michelle and Guinevere and the twins and Tori and the boys here. We've got Sierra and Tobias and look, Aurelia and Coco and Cozy and Lyle are over here. We've got down here, another level. Here we've got the Leshbers and we have Michael and Brooklyn and the Gattaprats are here. And let's see, who's this? Forrest and Maya. The Henzelkas are back there. And it's even got Mila the dog. And then the Browns took, most of my Hermione's uh, Legos went to the Brown girls. So the, all the Browns are back there. And then the Youngs are over here. And we've got even more. Our Lego friends are 
you. We've got, I'm sorry, Megan, but you and <laughs> Ali and Amina are stormtroopers. So I don't know, maybe that's a cool thing. And Eric's back here too. I started running out of uh, Legos at this point. So I only have the boy Bowen. And then who else do we have? Sarah, you're covering your mic. Yeah, sorry. I'm having a whole, like, I can't see what I'm doing. So I'm just hanging over the top. Here we've got, let's see, uh, the Serranos. I only had enough Legos for the guys back here. And the Stippics, I kind of just ran out of people at this point. But I did have a sweet mustached uh, guy for, for David there. And I've got the Gebhardts back here. I don't know what happened to Ross. I think one of my kids stole him. Um, and then Jessica, I just ran out of Legos for you and Micah. So you're like Loki and a combo of Iron Man, Aquaman, but you're there with us. And I'm sure there's more of our Lego friends that will join us in our house. But I needed to just like be in the room with you. And even though that doesn't feel the same, I know I have you here with me, okay? A lot of you are on here with me. Um, and I just wanna talk about how this time apart has made us feel. And so there's a lot of different ways that our body can feel. Um, what I'm gonna talk about today is the physical way, right? So um, usually we only notice what our body is feeling like if you get hurt you feel that right or if you're hungry oh you can really feel that and your body will let you know okay but we need to be able to listen to our body when it's good or bad feelings or maybe something in between all right so today we're going to do a couple of little quick exercises and one I just made up. I don't even know if it's a thing, but it helped me to kind of feel because even as grown-ups, sometimes we're not that great at feeling and at listening to what our body is telling us. Um, I am not that great at it. Honestly, sometimes I, I overdo it and then I'm like sore the next day and I, oh, I should have listened to my body yesterday. So first we're going to start off by just spinning. So you're gonna need a little space. If you've got siblings, you need to like, give yourself a little bit of room, okay? So I'm gonna try to stand up too and not knock into any stuff in Emmeline's room. But all we're gonna do is just spin for like 10 seconds. And then I want you to stop and just feel what your body is feeling, okay? So go. Uh, okay, now stop and try to stay really still. My body is telling me don't move very far to stay strong with my legs so I can be stable. Your body might be telling you don't throw up or that you need to sit down. So that's one way we can just like listen to our body, right? Spinning around kind of gets me out of order, okay? And feeling kind of dizzy. And it's silly, right? But then we can stop and really listen. That's something you can really, your body is telling you, whoa, that you need to like not move, right? And then the next thing we're gonna do is just take some belly breaths, okay? And this is something that you might do. We do this in church a lot as grownups. Let me put you down a little bit. Right, so we do this type of meditation where we're and trying to stay quiet and that can be harder right when you're a kid you don't always want to stay still and stay quiet but you can do this by laying on the floor I'm going to sit up so you can see me and all we're going to do is just put our hands on our belly and we just take a big deep breath in and you should feel your belly blowing up like a balloon and then slowly almost like you're slow motion blowing candles out so breathing in, feeling your belly expand, blowing that out. And that's a way to help your body relax and calm down. So I hope that you're able to use these things to listen to our bodies 
because God has given us this body and we need to listen to it and take care of it. Okay. So again, I miss you guys. I'm going to hang out with your Lego use for a little while. And um, I hope you all have a good day. That was awesome. Thank you. We, um, my name's Tiffany Lushber. This is Chris Lushber. And we had Eva here with us a second, but speaking of our physical bodies, her, she's been feeling kind of ill the past day or so. So she had to go lay down kind of unusual. So anyway, so thank you for doing that. Um, so, um, we have, well, one, bear with me because I'm nervous. I've never um, done Facebook Live, much less something as special as being part of communion or helping lead communion. But um, we've been going to uh, Peace of Christ for, uh, I guess we started about a month before COVID um, started. And we ended up um, losing our three-year-old Ezra about uh, two months after COVID started. And um you guys probably recognize our names because so many of y'all have poured into us during the season um, in so many ways um, through prayers, um, thoughtful gifts, notes, texts, in-person visits, helped with the service, playlists, songs, um, so much empathy, so many meals. I owe some of y'all dishes still. It's Peace of Christ has just been such a rich, rich community and we're so thankful for all of y'all. Um, I was gonna start with a, um, definition of, um, or I guess a reminder from Richard Rohr about the Eucharist. Um, the Eucharist bread and wine are not a prize for the perfect or a reward for good behavior, but rather they're food for the human journey and medicine for the sick. We come forward not because we're worthy, not because um, we, but because we are all wounded and somehow unworthy. I know I've definitely wondered if you can even make it through this world unscathed or um, or not wounded. Um, I know during the season of grief, we have leaned so hard into our church community and our family and our friends and our faith, and we're just so thankful. So if you will please join us for the liturgy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give thanks. Let us pray. This prayer is um, from a, a book from Sue Monk Kidd. I just kind of put one of her chapters into a, a prayer or a portion, a few paragraphs. Lord, help us to believe that we can find our way home through the crisis and suffering that fall upon us and believe it even in the midnight of our struggles that we know this requires a transfiguring vision. It requires faith. In all of those dark moments, oh God, grant that we might understand that it is you who are painfully parting the fibers of our being in order to penetrate the very marrow of our substance. Lord, help us to trust that inside us is a divine power that heals us. To recognize the sacred opportunity Help guide us through the ragged meadows of our soul. And um, I will be reading through uh, Luke 22, 19 and Matthew 26, 27. Um, so if you want to gather your elements. On the night he gave himself up for us, he took bread and the bread, he gave it to his disciples. He said, take this bread. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This cup, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood, the new covenant poured out for you. And for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ, died, died, Christ, risen, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Amen. Amen. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Tiffany, for sharing such a vulnerable word with us. I know so much hasn't been easy. Um, we've been honored to 
walk alongside you guys during this time, this season, and continuing to get to know you in the future and be in community with you. Um, so with that in mind, we're going to transition to this little segment that we call A Deeper Look. Uh, let's see. Can we see Tiffany and Christopher? Can you give me a thumbs up if y'all can see them on the screen too? There you go. <laughs> okay. So I'm hoping... I don't know if we can, let's do that. And then, yeah, we'll just hide your video. Okay, there you go. We can see both of us. I wanna see you guys. So basically we have this uh, segment called A Deeper Look that is really fitting for these times that we're in, but it's not a new segment. It's actually one of the things we've always done from the very beginning of starting our church. It's a way for us to introduce our community to each other in a deeper way on the day of our Sunday gathering. And so what we do is we ask three questions and um, we're going to ask Christopher these questions today and let him share more about himself and hopefully you all watching and participating will get to know a little bit more about him that way. And what we want to do is to try and do one of these every week now that we're in, these, in this virtual space and people aren't as connecting as easily. And so this is our first one. And so the first question for Christopher is just simply to introduce yourself to us and tell us a little bit about you. Okay, well, I'm a child of God, sanctified, justified, redeemed by the blood of Christ, saved by grace alone and Christ alone, granted eternal life by his resurrection and life, born of water as a fourth generation Hutto area Texan, raised as Chris, saved as Chris at A&M in 1995, accepted a call of ministry in 1997 as Chris, married as Chris in 2001, Father Jackson now 17, Landon now 15 as Chris, blew up that marriage due to many unhealed wounds within the, wherein the enemy inserted lies that became strongholds as Chris, divorced in 2012 and hit rock bottom as Chris, then met Tiffany Ann in 2013, connecting every day since, and on 6, September 26, 2014, I vowed at our wedding that as Chris, that I desperately needed her as my Ezra Konegdo in order to become my truest self, to step into adulthood at 39. Christian maturity, more apropos, already had been reborn of the spirit for some 20 years at that point, and most of the spiritual fruit were barely buds. I felt the urgency to bear more ripe fruit as Christopher, image bearer of Christ, who needed to fulfill his destiny to personify the Lion of Judah. January 10, 2015 became an important spiritual mile marker towards that purpose as I stepped back into sobriety. Then Precious Eva was conceived a month later and has a B-Day coming up later in October, by the way. Then came Ezra, Ezibubu, born of water on April 28, 2017, then reborn of the Spirit on May 12, 2020, as he went to our eternal home to be with Jesus. I am Christopher Wayne Leshper, image bearer of Christ, the Lion of Judah. Thank you, Christopher. That was incredible. No one's ever written a poem before, but that's exactly what you did in that space. And we learned so much about you in that small moment. So thank you for taking the time to prepare it. Um, the next question is kind of a fun one. And that is just to share with us something about yourself that no one would know unless you told them. So kind of like a court. Well, I love the question and uh, went with uh, the following because before camera phones and social media, uh, it's not as accessible as it might have might be today. And I, I believe it meets the nobody would know unless you told them. I'll leave it to your opinions if it's unique or eccentric. I was ordained on my mom's birthday, April 27, 1997, in an all black Baptist church, serving as a lay person, then preacher for just over three years wherein I was welcomed into many area black churches to preach. To this day, I'm blown away by the universal acceptance of a young face of the oppressor by congregations of an average age of 60 who had lived their whole lives in some level of oppression. Wow, thank you again for sharing something so deep with us. I did not know that about you, so thank you for sharing. Um, final question. I know you probably loved this one too, is what is something that you are especially passionate about right now on your spiritual journey? Ian Bounds is a 19th century Methodist who served as a chaplain for the Confederate Army during the Civil War, and, and it 
He said, it takes 20 years to write the sermon because it takes 20 years to make the man. 1995 to 2015, I believe, is that 20 year span with again, January 10, 2015 is a mile marker for me. And it has been an exhilarating exponential spiritual growth since. As we step further into our purpose by found, founding Romans 12 2 men's ministry, where we are disrupting the demand for modern day sex slavery through Christian discipleship. Ezra, Arnold, Ezra Arnold's abundant, abundant joy family trust is also in the works as we continue to demolish the generational curses and perpetuate the thousand generations of those who love God, personified to near perfection in Ezi Boo Boo, whose smile has captured the hearts of many already and whose abundant joy is changing lives drastically. I am most passionate and excited about the increasing intensity of righteous indignation, the kind of holy violence that inspired Jesus to form a whip to run out the grown men enslaved and empowered by the enemy of our souls to the powers to be who were taking full advantage of the disenfranchised in a form of worship to their idol mammon in the name of God. The random slap out of the temple to make room for the lame, the sick, and the rejected. I believe we are doing just that within the temples of the Holy Spirit and the individual and collective minds of men as we fulfill the God-given vision for Romans 12 too, which is to heal families and society by, the tra by transforming the minds of men into the one mind of Christ through discipleship within a community of the uh, warriors for the kingdom of heaven. Thank you, Christopher and Tiffany. Um, Christopher, your drive and your passion and your thoughtfulness and your absolute desire to, to follow Christ is such a gift to us. So thank you to both of you for being a part of our community. And um, now we'll just transition over to Paul, who's going to lead us in a meditation. Good morning, Peace Nicks. Christopher, that was amazing. Not only learning about you, but your thoughts and perspectives. Thank you very much. So the Lectio Divina literally means divine reading. It's an ancient practice of praying the scriptures. Its movement is slow and thoughtful, seeking only communion with God. It does not treat scripture as text to be steady, but as the living word. This morning, we will experience the Lectio together in a unique way. Instead of reading the same text three times, I will read three different passages once. Each reading informs today's theme in some way. Between readings, there will be space for your own meditation and reflection, to be more precise, 30 seconds. Through this practice of Lectio Divina, may you receive the acknowledgement and affirmation of embodiment in your heart, body, and life. The first reading is Genesis 1, 26 and 27 which seems to have been overlooked by many people preaching that God is man and that only men are in the image of God. Here's Genesis. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image to be like us. Let them be stewards of the fish in the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, the wild animals, and everything that crawls on the ground. Humankind was created as God's reflection in the divine image God created them, female and male, God made them. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. You must know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is within you. The spirit you have received from God, you are not your own. You have been bought with a price. So glorify God in your body.
Our final reading comes from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. You, however, are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a people set apart to sing the praises of the one who called you out of the darkness into the wonderful divine. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once there was no mercy for you, but now you have found mercy. We hear the voice of God in these words. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Paul, for reading those so well. Um, and these verses will be relevant a little bit later in the sermon, but I hope that you have them in the back of your mind as we think about these topics. I woke up to the news, some of you may have seen it as well, that Louisiana has declared a state of emergency in preparation for another potential hurricane. And this is crazy on its own, but it's crazy to me because my sister and her family just got home from staying with us last week because of Hurricane Laura, and chunks of Louisiana I know still don't have power Meanwhile, wildfires are raging on the West Coast and there's flooding on the East Coast and our whole country has been groaning with protest and the need for racial justice. And this is all on top of the COVID-19 pandemic. I know I'm not telling you anything new. Everything about this year signals that we can't go on as usual. And it seems like every time we try to, something else happens one thing after another. And to me, it feels like our hands are being forced and we have just got to learn better ways of treating each other and better ways of treating the earth. We don't have a choice. And what I'm learning through all of this is that no matter how I respond, what I do or don't do, none of this is enough if I'm not at peace in my own body, because so much is happening, I'm in a heightened state of anxiety or low mood or stress at any given point, you may be able to relate. And this constant stress is taking a toll on my body. And I'm noticing that I can't deal with things like I used to. I can't push through as easily as I once could. My body is just carrying too much. Our bodies are carrying too much. And everything about this moment in time, this crazy year is telling us that we can't go on as usual. We have to learn better ways of treating ourselves, beginning with our bodies, the bodies we live in. So, even though we put this embodiment series on our calendar way back in early February, it is both fitting and timely. And as I was preparing for this sermon, I started thinking about this activity that I did with my daughter earlier this week during our first week of pre-K homeschooling. And along with all the typical subjects, I decided to add some emotional and spiritual learning to our days together. And so this week we started with something called a butterfly body scan. And I linked to that in the guide if you're interested in that resource, but it was a meditation that required her to lay down, close her eyes and imagine a colorful butterfly flitting around her. The butterfly would occasionally land on parts of her body. And each time it did, she would imagine that specific part her head, her shoulders, her back, her knees, becoming super relaxed. Body scans are meant to help us get in tune with our bodies so that we're able to be fully present 
in the moment, fully accepting of the moment we're in. And for four-year-old Cozy, I couldn't believe how, how well it worked. I had never tried something like this with her before and she was totally into it. It seemed so effortless for her, so natural as if it were meeting some need I didn't realize she had. And I think were we to do this kind of thing more often, we might discover the same thing too, that we also have a deep need for this kind of thoughtful attention toward our bodies. And I'm reminded of one of our staff meetings a couple of weeks ago. We were checking in with each other like we always do. And Fran was talking about a stressful situation she was in and she mentioned how it was causing a lot of brain fog, which was making it hard for her to remember things or perhaps do her work as efficiently as normal. Matt related to this, noting how the high level of stress he was experiencing was making breathing difficult, his back was having pains, and it made me think about my own bodily stress response. And for me, I feel a constant tension in my neck as if the weight of the world has settled on my shoulders. And I wonder, have you thought about this? Have you noticed a connection between your mental or emotional angst and the tension in your body? Have you thought about what your body is needing or asking of you in these moments? A friend of mine, um, she shared a Facebook status this week from a gal named Rihanna Shaw Robinson, who is a pastor at Oakland City Church in California. And I felt these words so much to my core, I wanted to share them with you and I hope you receive them now. All it said was this, beloveds, if you are able, take a deep breath, then take another. Unclench your jaw, pull your shoulders down from your ears, drink a glass of water, remember that you are loved. See, we have this innate need to connect with our bodies, to develop an embodied intuition. And our need for this has spiritual relevance. More than that, it has Easter relevance because we've got Good Friday trauma living in us and we need the healing and wholeness of a bodily resurrection. And yet the church has not prioritized this reality. In fact, it is often done the opposite. Christianity has generally been suspicious of embodiment. It has pitted us against our own bodies. It has taken a dualistic posture, glorifying the spiritual, demonizing the physical, and it has used our sacred text to teach us that our bodies can't be trusted. And as a direct result, many of us live our lives disconnected from our bodies. And this is how we develop unhealthy, shame-filled relationships with overwork, burnout, food, image, sex, you name it. On top of this disconnect, we carry trauma in our bodies. And because our own faith tradition has more or less prevented us from the power of embodiment, the healing process is either slowed or non-existent. What's more? The vilification of embodiment is a problem on a systemic level. And because we are all connected and because our resurrection work is the work of oneness, we are required to turn outward even as we do our inner work. And when we do, here's what we discover. That women are sexualized from a young age. That that our bodies are made for two things, childbearing and sexual pleasure of men. We're taught we don't have control or agency over our bodies. We're blamed and shamed from the actions of men toward us. We're told to submit without question. And all of this bad theology is used to sustain the justification of violence and sexual violence toward women. Another macro pattern is that basic human dignity is denied to people of color in our society. 
black and brown bodies are treated differently than white bodies, whether in our streets or at our borders. Once again, this is a reality with theological roots. These roots have nourished our political and social structures, sending the message that black and brown bodies are inferior, are untrustworthy, must be policed, must be subdued. A final macro pattern I'll mention is that harmful disembodied theology has created a posture of fear and hatred toward queer and trans and gender nonconforming bodies. Violence toward these bodies is an epidemic. And yet the church pays hardly any attention to this at all, at least when it's not contributing to the problem. Now, I know that there's more to this than just bad theology, but we are the church. And as the church, we have to collect our people and our doctrine. It is our responsibility to right these wrongs. This is simply another part of our work as we seek to be a more embodied, whole, and healed people. I believe developing an embodied intuition, making it a spiritual practice, will bring us into a fuller relationship with God. This divine intimacy postures us to better listen to God, God in us, and to live more intuitively because we are living in sync with spirit as intended. This listening is so important, especially now in these times, so that we aren't manipulated by politicians or religious institutions or anyone else. No matter what context we are in, we are always going to see teachers and leaders and speakers have conflicting opinions, ideas, and perspectives. And we need to know our own convictions and have a belief in our own conscience because we are never, ever, ever going to please anyone. Or we're never going to please everyone, ever. Even as we function in community and walk alongside each other, we have to make peace with our own work and our own listening process. To one person, you may be a heretic, and to another, you'll never be woke enough. Regardless, at the end of the day, you are responsible for your own solid foundation of belief and practice. We've got to know how to listen for ourselves, and this requires an embodied intuition. Becoming in tune to our embodiment connects us more deeply with each other and it wakes us up to how connected we already are with each other, even though we don't always embrace this connection. Learning to embrace it is important though because we need each other to understand our personal and collective traumas. Gloria Anzualda said, we always inherit the past problems of family, community, and nation. And I agree, this is trauma. And I believe that this trauma lives on in our bodies. Trauma from our own tragic experiences. Trauma from our physical and mental and emotional and spiritual exhaustion but also trauma from historical wounds, pain from our parents, the pain of our ancestors. Any woman awake enough will tell you about her experience of the feminine wound, and it goes deeper than her individual self. Many people of color, especially Black and Indigenous people in our country, will tell you about the generational wound they inherited. It is unwanted, but it is theirs to bear. When I learn enough about my grandmother's story, I begin to understand that it is my story too. I know her struggles, I feel her shame, and even though she's gone three years now, I understand the aches she carried in her body. Every night, every night when I'm falling asleep, my eyes start to water, every night. And I have to wipe away unexplained tears. And I'm reminded of my grandmother wiping away her watery eyes as we sat at the kitchen table again and again and again. Her eyes were just always watering. I know without a doubt in my body that we carry the same stories and traumas. And the definition of intuition tells me that I don't have to logically explain this to you. I know it. My healing is her healing. And I'm telling you that whatever we need to heal from individually 
and collectively, we ought to prioritize because our bodies will carry it and our children's will too. So we heal for the sake of our past, our ancestors, for the sake of our present, ourselves, and for the sake of our future, our children, and all of creation. And I am more and more convinced that this healing is incomplete without an embodied intuition. And if you're the type that needs permission, the Bible gives us plenty of it, starting at the very beginning with Imago Dei. One, Genesis 1, we are made in God's own image. Two, 1 Corinthians 6, our bodies are good. Our bodies are holy temples in which the Spirit of God dwells. Three, 1 Peter 2, we don't actually need permission because we are ourselves priests, a holy nation, God's own people, chosen, beloved, and we don't need anybody to grant us access to God's love or presence or divine wisdom. I could go on and on and on in the entirety of scripture from Yahweh to Christ. The physical is used to highlight miracles and healings. Even in this week's lectionary reading, God tells Moses, stretch out your hand three different times when parting and crossing the Reed Sea. God could have parted the sea in an instant, but no, God empowered Moses and not just Moses, but his body. Also in today's lectionary, women in Exodus singing and dancing after a victory, worshiping God, meaning their response to provision is a bodily one and God approves. Also in today's lectionary, Romans 14, it's an intersection of theological conviction, listening to your body and soul autonomy. You can go read it later. Do you see what I mean though? This was our lectionary. You can ask Paul. I didn't send him the readings until last night at like eight o'clock because I couldn't pick one. And then even then I had to pick three. And Fran has a totally different set of texts for next week, and Matt will have more the week after that. It's all throughout our sacred texts, bodies being used to make decisions, bodies walking with God, acting in God's name, healing, being healed, doing God's work. And we have permission to not only include our bodies in our faith experience, but to prioritize this embodiment, to honor what our physical experience is telling us. So may we honor our bodies. May we take time to breathe and stretch and be still and quiet and assess how we're feeling every day. May we understand the deeper truths our bodies tell us when we need rest, discipline, or play, where we need healing. May we understand the God truths revealed to us through our own intuition. God is with us, in us, around us, among us, even now, even in these times of collective chaos, even as the earth groans with hurricanes and earthquakes and wildfires and injustice, may our bodies remind us God dwells here. And may we believe it with all our minds, hearts, souls, and bodies, may we believe it without the need for conscious reasoning or permission or approval for anyone, may it be so. Amen. 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 Thank you for that powerful message, Aurelia. I'm so grateful for that. I'm grateful for this community. We Look, y'all, we strive every week to make uh, services, gatherings, meetings of this type that are soul sustaining and spirit sustaining. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity for us to focus on the sustenance of the body and the importance of it and the sacredness of it. So I'm grateful for this community. I'm, I'm grateful for every single person who has um, contributed to an element today. And I will be right before, so Megan's gonna end us with the, with the benediction. And so this last element is a moment for us to close our eyes and be embodied and take the breaths that we need and to feel the, the heart, our hearts and our blood pounding, going through our veins. So this is a litany but it's also a meditation. It is a, not a responsive litany. So I will basically read it to you and over you, and you are invited to connect with your own body and with the divine in this moment. Yes? All right. We are beings existing in the universe, beholding God. 
We can see you, God, in the design of nature, the cosmos, the creatures, each other, ourselves. Let us now go to our inmost being and be as we are, deeply spiritual, deeply human, temporally minded, eternally conscious. Let us connect with the spark of you that is there, waiting to be rediscovered, waiting to be fanned into flame. Set us aright as conscious souls in the midst of a conscious universe created by a great intelligence, you, the force of love, set us aright among creation as participants, caregivers, co-creators, set us aright. As spiritual beings inside corporeal bodies, dust and breath give to us health and connectedness, wholeness and joy in existing, set us aright. As a human family, learning to love another despite earthly differences set us aright. As members of the body of Christ among humanity, as a productive, cohesive unit desiring love and wisdom for all, set us aright. As reflectors of you, as God bearers, God perceivers, and God receivers, set us aright here in our inmost beings, still and quiet before you, opening to your light. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'll read the benediction. <clears throat> Lord, you are ascending God. You sent your word to create. You sent Christ to reveal. You sent your spirit to empower. You sent your church to proclaim. Send us, us to, God, God, to renew the earth. earth. Lead, lead us by your spirit as, as your people, people we now go. Name. By I our name, we'll name. make you know. God, you are sent. Go in peace for peace. Amen. Amen.